Another really important goal of TCP is fairness. And this is actually pretty interesting because there is this uh, agreement that all of us have actually entered into in order to use the internet that's baked into TCP. And that agreement is about how resources in the network should be divided. By using TCP, by using standard TCP implementations, we're actually engaged in a cooperative process of trying to make sure that internet resources don't get wasted and that we don't overload various uh, important parts of the internet and cause wasted traffic. So let me kind of explain how that works. And I'm gonna use a really simple example. So let's imagine that we have an empty internet except for two people. We've got Alice and Bob, and both Alice and Bob are trying to retrieve some large file from a particular server. Now, imagine that Alice initiates her connection first, and her connection is passing through a series of hops on the internet uh, through different routers. Each one of these links has some capacity, and each one of the routers along the path also has a capacity. There's a number of packets that it can process in a given amount of time, and if that number is exceeded, its queue is gonna to start to fill up, and eventually it's gonna to start to drop packets. So the first thing that TCP will do is TCP, when, when, when Alice starts retrieving this file, so the server is starting to send information back to Alice's machine, TCP creeps into this process. So this is something that's called slow start. When TCP starts up, it has no idea what the capacity of these links are. And so rather than overload the network right away, it starts off at a slow speed and then it gradually increases speed, increases speed, increases speed, uh, tries to download things faster and faster and faster until it notices that packets are starting to get dropped. So once packets start to get dropped, TCP figures the link is at full capacity, whatever, and, and, and packets can drop for a bunch of reasons. Uh, the core of the internet may have plenty of available capacity, but it's possible that this last top right here that's close uh, to Alice's uh, house or Alice's place of work doesn't have as good capacity as the core internet. At some point, what TCP will do is it will start off slow and it's going to identify a bottleneck. And then at that point, it's gonna kind of keep uh, try to maintain this level of speed, assuming nothing else changes. So TCP is trying to find, it's trying to deliver the content as quickly as possible, but it also doesn't want to introduce loss because loss is expensive. When TCP drops packets, the sender has to retry those packets again. And so if those packets made it several hops through the network, all the work that the network did to transmit those packets closer to their destination has been lost. So TCP doesn't want to cause packet loss. And so it increases slowly until it starts to see packets loss and then it stops. So here, this is what happens and now Alice has found you know some link within the network that's her bottleneck and she's downloading content as fast as possible. Now let's imagine at this point later in her connection Bob starts to download the same file. Now Bob probably has a different path to the server than Alice does, right? Uh, he might, his path might go through here, might go through here. Um, but what might happen, let me turn these arrows around so they're pointing the right way, um, is that Bob is gonna create more traffic on this one link that is shared. So if they're downloading from the same server, it's likely that there's some link that both of them are using. Maybe, maybe not, but in this case there is. And let's say that this link, these routers start to become overloaded. So these routers start to drop packets. Um, the, the combined traffic from Alice and Bob is too fast. So what is Alice's TC, what is Bob's TCP implementation going to do? Well, what it's, what's gonna happen is his is also gonna start out slow, and as soon as it starts to see packet loss, it's gonna kind of try to stop. But what's gonna happen to Alice's connection? So the fact that Bob has started to create extra traffic in the network is gonna cause Alice's speed to drop because Alice's TCP implementation is now going to start to see packet loss that's being caused by Bob's connection. So once Bob starts up, what's gonna to happen to Alice is her connection, the speed of her connection is going to drop. And Bob's connection is gonna start up, is gonna cause some congestion, and it's gonna drop as well. And what's happened here is without any explicit coordination between Alice and Bob and between Alice and Bob's computers, 
TCP has divided the resources within the network in some somewhat fair way. So rather than allowing Alice to have all the bandwidth and basically kind of kill off Bob's connection, or rather than letting Bob's new connection completely starve Alice's connection, TCP allows both connections to share the network, and it does so by increasing speed until it sees packet loss, and then allowing other clients to slow down. So eventually what will happen is Bob will be achieving some speed, Alice will be achieving some speed, and the combination of their traffic should saturate some part of the network. So in this case, it's fast enough to just, uh, that these routers can just keep up with it. If either Bilas or Bob tried to increase their connection faster, these routers would start to drop packets and they would slow down again. So this is how TCP, again, this is kind of cool because without any explicit coordination between Alice and Bob, TCP is still able to divide resources within the network so that both Alice and Bob receive some fair share of the network resources.